should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely? I long for my heavenly home. When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the so I know that he's watching over me. So let not your heart be troubled, for his tender, tender words I can hear, and resting on of my doubts and my fears. For by the path he leadeth, and there's one thing, one thing I can see, God's eyes on his sparrow. So I know that he's watching over you and me. So I'll sing because I'm happy. I'll sing because I'm free. God's eye is on his so I know that he's watching over you and me. Yes, I can sing because I'm happy. I can sing because I'm free. So I know, yes, I know, I said I know that he's watching over you and me. Let us pray. Lord, continue to guide us in our pursuit of serving and loving our neighbors. Amen. So who is our neighbor? This is a very simple yet complex question the lawyer poses. He was pretty sure on who the neighbor was. It's simple because we already can assume who this lawyer thought the neighbor was, but complex because neighbor is broad and subjective. Who, what, what is a neighbor? Who do we call a neighbor? How far do we go to call someone a neighbor? Our neighbors in our place of residence, the place we call home. Our neighbors in the workplace, in the church, around the church. Our neighbors who live in the surrounding towns, neighbors in central PA, the state, the country, North America, South America, you know, the world. Who is our neighbor? Well, the quick and dirty answer is everyone, obviously. But the difficult task is, how do we figure out how to love our neighbor as ourself? That statement right there has always bothered me. 
Does our neighbor want to be treated like we treat ourselves? That's an important question. Does our neighbor want to be treated the way we treat ourselves? If we don't treat ourselves well, should we then treat others not well? That's living up to what Jesus said. I feel that a lot of us, myself included, do not treat ourselves well. We abuse our bodies with stationary lifestyles, overindulge in highly processed and highly sugary foods. I, I've been told I like my sweets. <laughs> We don't take enough leisure time to inhale when all we are asked to do is exhale. We live lifestyles that maybe aren't the best for our bodies, our minds, and our souls. How often do we find ourselves hating a part of ourselves? I'm sure each and every one of you have, have wished that you were someone else at some point in your life. Maybe someone more good-looking, or talented, or smarter. And how often do we find ourselves almost no grace when we screw up? If this is how we treat ourselves, is that really how Jesus wanted us to treat others? Treat your neighbor as yourself, Jesus says. What I'm basically saying is, if we treat ourselves badly, should we treat others the same way? Well, the answer is no. But there is a lesson here that is subtle and I think often overlooked. I don't hear many sermons about this. How we treat our own bodies, our minds, and our souls is just as important as how we treat others. This can feel a little contrary to what we have often been told, to put others above ourselves, right? we, we got to deny ourselves for the sake of others. But just because we put others above ourselves, that doesn't mean we have to put ourselves down. We can lift others up at the same time as lifting ourselves up. It doesn't have to be this. It can be this. As a pastor, I'm required to take boundary training every couple of years. And one of the major reasons for this is to make sure that we are not putting ourselves in situations that will optically maybe look bad to the outside world and cause harm and issues for those inside our congregations and our own familial lives. And Brene Brown is huge in boundaries and all that kind of stuff. If you haven't heard of her. Uh, she's a famous author and professor. And she says, to be clear is to be kind, and to be unclear is to be unkind. To be clear is to be kind, and to be unclear is to be unkind. When we are clear about our expectations, our boundaries, our wants, desires, dislikes, and so on, we do not leave room for interpretation and guesswork for other people. We are respecting not only our own needs and our own wants, but other people's sanity for not having to guess, oh, is that okay with that person? And you don't have to feel like you're always walking on eggshells because you know. To be clear is to be kind. And this should never be done out of anger or spite or resentment. Being clear is an act of kindness. And in Brene Brown's book, Braving the Wilderness, which, if you haven't read, I highly suggest it. Braving the Wilderness by Brene Brown. Very good read. Uh, she writes, The clearer and more respected the boundaries, the higher the level of empathy and compassion for others. Fewer clear boundaries, less openness. It's hard to stay kind-hearted when you feel people are taking advantage of you or threatening you. If we cannot learn to respect ourselves, how can we ever learn to respect others? If we cannot learn to be honest to ourselves and delve deep into who we are, this gift of a soul that we were given, 
and be truthful about that gift to ourselves, how can we ever see the gift in others? She goes on and reminds us that we are talking about human beings here also. And that there is no such thing as a lesser human or a greater human. And that it includes even the people we hate, even the people we consider the most evil person ever. They are still human. And they deserve to be treated the way that we deserve to be treated. And this is hard to hear. I recognize that. I, it's not something I instinctively want to do. We want to get our pitchforks out and say, hey, you know, bring this person down, destroy them. We want to attach the evil to the person. We want to make them into a devil. But they're not the devil. They're human. This does not mean that we had to put up with hate speech or bigotry or prejudice or racism or all those ideologies that break down human society and and humanity in its own right. But what it does mean is that we need to never forget the humanity of our neighbors, even those neighbors we call enemy. This is the biggest difference between Christianity and the world, in my opinion. Our call to love our enemy. We can call out bigotry without turning a bigoted person into the devil. And I know that for those who are oppressed and marginalized by these groups, this is a tall ask coming from a privileged person in society. And it couldn't come across as insensitive or maybe that I'm not fighting as hard as I should for those on the margins. And, and maybe I'm not. But it is our call to love our enemy. It's Jesus' call. No matter how hard that call is. We cannot fight injustice by acting unjustly. We cannot fight hatred by hating people and expecting love. We cannot solve the world's problems by becoming the very problems that we sought to resolve. Just changing it into a different group of people. This is not just true for social change. It's also true for our intrapersonal change, too. those conversations we have with ourselves. If we don't first improve the relationship we, with, we have with ourselves and with God, we don't stand much of a chance to improve our personal relationships with each other. Christianity has such a rich tradition of asking us to set time away to be with God and ourselves. And I think that is lost in modern Christianity. There's this sense of time away, time with. Time away, time with. We need time to inhale. But we're always asked to exhale. We need to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. We are not Jesus. We are not here to save the world all on our own. That's the body of Christ. That's all of our call, not the individual. We must be first willing and be able to love ourselves so that we can truly love our neighbors with the love that we are called to share. Each of you are worthy of love, and God loves every single one of you. And I hope you know that. God does. And if we believe that, spread that, live that, joy won't be so hard to find. Love your neighbor as yourself, but don't forget to love yourself along the way. Amen.